Onigashimasu. Welcome back to the Kojiri Karate Center. Firstly, we just big shout out to everybody and a big thank you for all the uh, views. We're closing in on a massive number of 1 million views across our channel. So, you know, it's fantastic and it is only because of all the subscribers and the viewers out there. Hey, our resident Brian is in the dojo and we're making the most of his, of his time. Um, some things that were brought up recently with us. So, uh, karate suit. Mine has been tailored to fit my body, which works nicely for me. I like my pants a little higher. I like my jacket a little bit more baggy. I like my sleeves like three quarter down my arm. And Brian has bought a brand new karate suit and unfortunately arrived untailored. So Brian, let's just, so Brian likes to train. Roll down the, those sleeves, Brian. You bad person, Brian. How dare you train with washing up sleeves, you know, it looks like he's just come from next to the zinc where every good getchi needs to be cleaning the sensei's mess first thing in the morning, you know. So, um, classically, there, let's have a look. Yeah, classically, if you're buying a gi just out of interest and you want it, if it's a good quality gi and you know that there's a certain amount of shrinkage, if you buy it and it fits on your wrist when you wash it, it will shrink approximately one fold. Um, and this is my measurement that I use when I buy my Shredo. Um, I go in and I go, um, I measure down and I, I take one fold and I go, oh, okay, I want it to end there. So I bring it down one fold. That's where I get them to tailor it to. And when it shrinks a little bit, it shrinks to that position that I'm comfortable with. Um, the same thing with uh, the girth and the weight, etc. Obviously, I'm not going to make Brian roll his pant legs down because he won't be able to move. It would be a little bit unfair, especially if we had to do something combative. All right, so um, this is a classical, good uh, way to wear your karate suit. It must be kept impeccably clean and white. You'd never allow to get it dirt. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm talking nonsense. It's an overall. It's for training in, sweating in, and that you must try your best to keep it white, try your best to keep it clean, okay? But at the end of the day, if it gets soiled from training, that's its purpose. If it gets yanked and tugged and pulled because we're doing grappling and that kind of stuff, that's the reason we have it, rather than your T-shirt, which will get ripped, and then you're wondering why you don't have any T-shirts to wear and you have to wear, walk around with a vest. Hey. Hey, so, uh, kakie. So, last time we, we, we trained, we worked on the Mawashi Uke, and today I thought we'd kind of just run through some other kind of principles. So, Brian is going to, again, push and hold. He's going to attack with that hand. I'm going to block, attack, and attack. All right? So, I'm just trying to give people something. If you're training and you want to do something extra with your kakie, your partner pushes and holds. One, two, three. And I'm, I'm building a couple of ideas. Somebody asked me if I understand the principles of uh, pressure point striking and running through this whole chain of events. But if I'm eliminating his arm and attacking here, I'm hopefully going to stop his arm from working so well, it's gonna make my life easier to deal with him because he can't punch so well, he's hurted, he might favor his other arm. So this is the idea. I'm attacking his limb with an attack. One, two, and then three. There's no point in stopping here and then going, all right, now I have to use this hand. This hand is closer. So I hit, hit, attack. All right, now if I miss, it leads me somewhere else. So Brian presses and holds. If I miss, I'm straight away, I'm into, I could do this way, could do this way, and if I bring it in, now I can welcome this hand into the equation. The moment I do this, however, that hand is starting to come, and so Brian, let's go. Uh, now we can start playing. So today at, the, at this point, I'm working on kouke, wrist block, and 
everybody tends to focus just solely on the wrist. But what about your fingers? What about your thumb? How do you use them? Where do they get put? Okay, so it's not like, um, so Brian, let's go, Kakie. Um, I'm going to replicate something I saw in a movie. Um, I'm just going to do it with Brian standing up. So Brian, press one, two, and three. Somebody taking a thumb and putting it under the neck and going, all right, now that's going to be super dangerous because here's my thumb under your neck. Um, you could do this to some people all day and nothing's going to happen. They're just going to beat you up. All right. However, if we do the exact same thing again, Brian, and press one, two, and I take my thumb and I press it in there. So please turn this way, Brian. So a little like free lesson in anatomy. We go into this little notch here. It's sometimes called the sternal notch. And we press in here. Behind this is the windpipe and esophagus. In other words, your airway and your digestive system, the start, you know, goes in there and down. And if I take my thumb and it fits in there quite nice and I press, okay, I'm starting to shut down that airway. And that makes life uncomfortable. How's that feel, Brian? Okay, now there is, hold on Brian, there is an even more ugly, painful experience to be had when the finger goes in and down this way. So when I push my finger in and down, it's a little bit nastier, but it's a bit awkward. You know, you have to, you have to be doing this. But if I take my thumb and I do thumb drive like that, I might hurt him. Um, I might steal a bit of his air. Okay, so uh, pressure points only work for a few seconds. They're not something that's going to end a fight in a big way. I'm not going to go uh, and hold him here and he's going to suddenly capitulate and go, my life's in danger. So um, we go back to our kakie and as Brian push, one, two, three, four, five, um, I think there's a little bit of a better chance here because the eyes by their very nature are these massive nerve centers. So there's a lot of nerves in that eye, and you, all, that, all you have to experience in life is either a hair or a little flying midge or mosquito, we in South Africa, we call it a mickey, going into your eye, and then you're standing and you're trying to get that insect or that hair or that particle out your eye. It is the mo one of the most uncomfortable things to experience. So imagine somebody suddenly is sticking their fingers in your eyes, and it's going to limit your ability to fight because you're struggling to see. So we're here and press down, punch, one, two, three. So now this back wrist, backhand strike. All right. It's not, not comfortable, but we'll just make Brian do something interesting now. So Brian, one, two, block. Okay, so he blocks with this hand, now this hand. I use the back of my hand and hit. Now, I could do back of my hand this way, I could use my wrist. It's up to you. But now you're seeing a different style of kouke, different wrist strike. Okay, from the same place. So we're using wrist strike to make ourselves work a bit better. Maybe Brian, wants to lift his hand up, and now he wants to bring the punch in low. Now, I'm stepping in, hitting, shoulder barging, maybe it's one idea. That's just what kind of came off the... Brian, take it up. How, how, how did that one feel, Brian? In, smooth, soft, hard, hip, Hot. Okay, and for those of you who are aficionados of uh, Tensho Kata, hey, this, this, or this, and this, or this, and this, and this, and this, any of these kind of ideas, we're kind of putting those into place and we're using this wrist to block, and it's kind of making our lives kind of fun and games. So, Brian takes it up, he comes in low. I'm using the same hand. So let's go again, Brian. He presses it up, 
It's like dirty boxing. He's hitting here. I'm using my elbow. Now I could do one of two things. I could try and bring my elbow down, but he's still going to connect. All right. Or we're here. Um, as he punches, I'm going to apply a little Thai sabaki. I'm going to twist my body. And immediately this becomes a glancing blow. And then to facilitate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this elbow in this way. And then sidestep and hit. Now, if I grab on and I am striking here, I'm creating a lock. That lock could come to another wrist position like the gooseneck. So these are all cool spots because typically of what, what Gorgi wants to do is Gorgi wants to engage and basically end up in some kind of stand-up clinched position. So we're here and we're here. All right, now we can twist the person and twist the person and we've got a few ideas. Now, using Kouke or wrist to his disadvantage, number one, pressing down. Now, this only works when I have his elbow against my stomach and I am turning away from that other hand. I can't stand and do this in front because then he's going to slot me. I need to turn away. When I turn away, I keep his elbow here, but I take his wrist and I do this. Now, look at his face. Watch here. That is starting to hurt. Now, if I add in a few added extras, like if I can grab a thumb or I can grab his fingers and now I'm starting to pull and to tear this and this is really cool because this is the tie-in to the principles of China which is joint manipulation but more importantly the fact that we're wanting to try and fight in this very very brutal and graphic way breaking fingers ripping fingers apart and so we start doing things like this or like this now from here, should I want to be like all fancy and elaborate, I might pull his hand behind his back and lift it up behind his back and hold and have a control here. Now, for some people, this works like a charm where you have this lock like this and you're doing this and you're kind of holding the person up. But again, it's a very, very awkward position to be in. If I slide it in and I really want to get it into a good position, what I want to do is I want to get his arm into the crook of my elbow and I want to get my hand pressing on the back of his arm here. So if I'm just going to pull Brian's hand, if I get into this position and I slide up and I have him in this position, now his best escape is to step forward and to try and get away from this. And we used to say the best way out of this particular grip or hold would be a forward roll. But my power is this leveraging up on his hand. So I'll hold his arm in place, my hand's doing this on the back of his tricep there, and from the crook of my elbow, I raise his hand up. And it becomes awkward and painful. Now, what makes it even better is when I grab onto something, now I can walk and it's a nice controlled position. So you may find that this is a good position to control a person. And again, it's typical of that entangling idea. We've had a few comments from somebody who does uh, uh, Kung Fu, and in particular, they're talking about snake form, and we were talking about arms in the comments. So um, how do I get into that position? Okay, so Brian goes up, down, two, three, four. Now, when I'm on this side and I'm move here, my hand's in the wrong position. What I want to do is I want to get my hand into this position. So I can fold, fold his wrist and grab and pull. Now there is the shortcoming. At speed, non-compliance, this starts to fall apart. So you have to work the idea. And that's why we do kakie. We literally are working that idea. So he's up to, I'm elbow and wrist rolling over, affecting him. Maybe there's a back heel involved, grabbing and pulling. And now he's ready into the escape. This is going to stop. Brian, do you want a forward roll, please, now? Why not? I can't. <laughs> he speaks. <laughs> All right. 
And so this is what we're looking for. We're going to go up, down, around. And so now I'm changing it. I'm using this elbow and my body moving. A lot of people want to go. I want to go this way. All right. And the reason is I don't want to hit him with the smallest hammer in my toolbox. I want to hit him with the biggest hammer. And that hammer's mass is the mass of my entire body hitting and then affecting him and then attacking and now going onto that arm. So along the way is this idea of my arm moving around and hitting and encircling. Kind of like a snake when it climbs up that vine. And I think this is where our friends and our cousins doing Kung Fu and talking about snake-like movements. They, 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 they like this idea. Or this idea. Or snake slides, comes back on itself. I'll just move around rather. Rear, guillotine, or round, forward guillotine. These kind of ideas. So these ideas all come from these kind of circular movements. We used to have an exercise with Sensei Chinin that looked like this. Uh, you take one hand and you push it up and around, go behind yourself and then keep your hand flat, go over your head, bring it around, come back. So I'd go out the back, bring it around, keep my hand palm up and round. And what you would do, Brian, get me something small that I can just hold on my hand, please. A few moments later. So, um, got cups, they're very light, and the idea would be like party trick. Try and keep that cup on your hand, <gasps> and then bring it back to the front. And so you'd have these two hands. Now I remember since a chin and doing this with us as kind of kiddies, and the idea being that you would a work on your oopsie, work on your flexibility, and b when you get back to this position, you're working on coordination. Hey, Brian, catch. So something fun for outside training: maybe two little cups with a little bit of water. Make the students hold them and essentially work on rotation, rotation. Rotation. Now, obviously, I went this way as forward, but I could also follow it with this hand. So if I took this hand and I went, uh, we're going to go this way and this way, and then we're going to go around, round, and then I'm going to bring it back. And so my hands are going to move around in this kind of fashion. And what I'm doing now is I'm starting to loosen up, starting to twist my body, and I'm starting to try and keep my palms up the whole time and trying to bring my hands around and get to here. Now, everybody was watching, and we were, you know, kids probably mid-1980s, since Chin and doing this with us in the dojo, all the cups out of the water station, and we're all trying to balance cups, etc. And I'm sure there were a few people who were going, what was he doing? Is this karate? Why the heck is he doing this, etc.? Now, the first thing is this body motion. You're encouraging the development of the body moving. Next thing, flexibility and range of motion. We don't find movements like this in this exact format in our karate. We find snippets of movements like this. So you'll often find strike. My hands here, I either pull it back and strike or I clear around my head and you'll be like, well, why would that happen? Hey, Brian, let's go. And Brian presses down and so there's that blocking motion, hands are up, that second hand is following up, now there's the strike. Now, 
I've got this, I've got this, I can also take this, and that's that body motion coming into play. All right? So the whole body is being utilized. Just so one. These kind of motions, you grab on, trying to get out of a technique, but to go forward and to come back with something in it. Okay? Life becomes very, very interesting. Hey, she must run. So, I think the difficulty for a lot of people when it comes to doing karate and being in the dojo, maybe sitting on the bench outside as a parent, as a spectator, or sitting on the other end of the computer, looking and going, why the heck are you doing this? We need to understand that sometimes we need something incredibly creative to keep young minds enthralled and focused on what they're doing. And it might not seem like they're doing karate, they're doing something fun, playing with two cups and some water outside in the driveway or in the garden and trying to get the coordination right. But in actual fact, what we're encouraging is the development of the gross motor ability to work together. You cannot do this exercise standing still, especially with two cups of water, you're going to get wet. You start realizing you've got to move your entire body. And I think it's a critical idea. So our video has had a massive segue. We'll just go with it and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Take your hands like this. Let's just lose one hand. We're going to bring this hand in. We want to try to keep our palm up. We're going to bring it under our arm. And then we're going to slip our hand back. This is kind of like an escaping movement. Imagine somebody holding your wrist. Now, you'll notice I've pushed my body this way so I could try and keep my hand flat. Now I'm going to bring my hand round and I'm going to raise it up, go over my head, keep my hand nice and round. And then when I bring it around to the front, I'm going to keep my hand there. Okay, so if I go backwards, I'm going to go over my head, go around, push myself back to this position, Fold my arm in and bring my hand back and out and around. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Take the other hand. One, two, three, four. Other way. One, two, three, four. Four. Now, when they follow each other, it gets a little bit more complicated. There's an extra half turn somewhere because this hand comes around quite easy, but this hand still has to fold around. So, and now that body needs to work. So, fun and games, please go and play with that idea. And um, this is a uh, a thumbs up to everybody who's made comments, but uh, to, I think it's uh, Eagle Snake, uh, the comments about the snake form and Kung Fu. Hopefully this is somewhere where we've got a little common ground, where we are studying and doing the same thing, but we maybe have a different language we use to describe it and a different set of movements. And there is obviously and always some kind of, grab on Brian, some kind of practical, innovative ideas that can come from those movements, which may or may not work because sometimes the best answer is just simply to be a thug. My friends out there, arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much for joining us. A little bit of a ADHD morning. I hope you enjoyed the, the video. Thanks again to everybody who's been watching. We're nearly at that elusive and huge milestone of 1 million views. Hey, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Arigato gozaimasu. Have an awesome week. Sayonara.